Hi, today I'm talking to you about using Shopify to build a headless storefront. I'll be digging into the benefits of using Shopify, the technical and architectural considerations to keep in mind, and a few Shopify specific quirks to also keep in mind before you get started. My name is Kelly Vaughn. I'm the founder and CEO of The Tap Room. We're a Shopify Plus agency based out of Atlanta, Georgia. We specialize in custom development solutions for high growth businesses on Shopify and Shopify Plus. I'm a developer and I've been in the Shopify space since 2014. So let's get started. Shopify goes headless. Shopify only recently started getting into the headless game. They launched the JavaScript by SDK, the first version, in 2018, and this is a lightweight library that allows you to build e-commerce into any website. They started to make a really big shift, though, in 2019 when they released the admin API, and they released this in both GraphQL and REST, um, but this was their first kind of shift into GraphQL. And a few months later, they released the Storefront API, which is only released in GraphQL at this point going all in. The admin API and the storefront API are what opened up the possibility of going headless on Shopify. I'll dig into these APIs a little bit later. So why use Shopify for headless commerce? Been in the Shopify space for a while, so I need to give them the credit where credit's due. First off, the checkout experience. It's trusted, it's secure, and it's optimized for speed and conversions, especially on mobile. When you have over 70% of your customers coming in from a mobile device, that optimization is super important for mobile. Second, product management. You can keep managing all of your products and all of your collections within Shopify, or if you're using like a PIM system, you can import that into Shopify, but Shopify will always keep all of your data up to date and that will always be the source of the data. Third, Shopify apps. There is such a wide range of pre-built apps already in the app store for all potential use cases, and there are more apps being released daily. Fourth, customer accounts. You can keep using Shopify to maintain those customer accounts, even if you're using a different storefront. So you can let Shopify handle the authentication and the login, and then go back to your store. And lastly, order management. Shopify can continue to handle the flow of orders or connect into your 3PL, so you don't have to build a custom order management system. Shopify can remain the back end of the system while you build an entirely different storefront. So let's go through some examples of Shopify headless builds. Uh, first, we have Staples Canada. Uh, they re released pretty recently. Um, they're on Shopify Plus and they use Contentful as their CMS. You'll notice a lot of these examples use Contentful. Next, we have JB Hi-Fi. They're out of Australia and they're also using Shopify Plus and Contentful as well. JB Hi-Fi is one of the largest brands on Shopify. We have two more. We have Plant Rise and Something Navy. Both use Shopify Plus, both use Contentful as their CMS, but they also use a backend service called Nacelle, which I'll get into in a little bit. PlantRise also uses Recharge for subscriptions and is built on Gatsby, whereas Something Navy is built on Vue and Nuxt. So here are some technical considerations to keep in mind. First off, you can modernize your tech stack. On the storefront, you're most likely used to building themes with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Liquid, of course, and probably jQuery. You can finally introduce the Jamstack into your regular tech stack or use any modern library or framework such as Vue, React, or Angular. Next, you can build a CI CD pipeline. If you've built a theme on Shopify, you know how difficult it is to do any form of continuous integration or continuous uh, delivery or deployment. You can, by decoupling the front end from Shopify, you can finally make your CI CD dreams come true. Next, we have static site generation. With a headless storefront, you can do static generation. And it's so important, especially for e-commerce businesses, because there's a proven in inverse correlation between low latency and higher conversion rate. It's also built to scale. So because you're not having to make a request every single time a customer visits a store, spikes in traffic due to flash sales or new product launches, they aren't an issue. And lastly, if you're interested in progressive web apps, you can do that as well. So you can go the PWA route. They're a really clever and accessible way to provide online shoppers with a more fluid and flexible experience, especially on mobile devices. Now for some architectural considerations. First off is the data access layer. 
If you go headless, you have to choose between creating your own data layer or using a backend service to handle this for you. And this is where Nacelle comes in for me. Nacelle is a backend service that handles the data layer so you can focus all your time on building components for the front end. If you want to handle the data layer yourself, you absolutely can. I just recommend setting aside a pretty significant amount of time. You're gonna to have to build a database for the product data and the CMS content, a backend API for collecting data, a backend authentication system, a connector and object loader to bridge the API in your tech stack, a cart system, business logic, a dashboard to handle indexing and merchandising, checkout and customer account integration. You catch my drift, the list goes on and on. There's a lot that goes into the data layer, so make sure you take some time to choose whether you want to handle that yourself or you want to use a backend service for that. Next, the headless CMS. You wanna make it easy for your merchants or their team to be able to update the content on their store. So that's why I really recommend using a headless CMS. All the examples I showed before, they use Contentful. I prefer to use Contentful as well. You can also use Sanity or Strapi or really any, any headless CMS available. And lastly, you're gonna to need to choose where to deploy your storefront. I've personally been deploying all of my headless builds on Netlify. I cannot express how easy they make it. Um, highly recommend looking into it if you are trying to figure out where to deploy your storefront. And finally, just some other considerations to keep in mind. First off, Shopify apps. You can't use them all. They must have an API. They must be built in a way that allows for an integration for headless build. You're gonna have most luck with some of the most popular apps. For marketing tools, you'll look at Klaviyo, Justuno, and PostScript. For customer interaction, you're gonna look at Gorgeous, Smile.io, Swell, Okendo. And checkout and financing tools, you can use Recharge for subscriptions or Klarna for financing. Before going down the headless route, I recommend taking an inventory of all the current Shopify apps being used and make a list. Figure out what's absolutely necessary for the storefront, what can be dropped, what needs a custom integration, which apps have zero impact on the storefront, and which ones just aren't going to be possible with headless builds. Next, you lose access to the Shopify theme customizer. And this is why using a headless CMS is so important. Merchants are really used to using the theme customizer, so it's gonna be a bit of a mindset shift for them. I recommend spending some time in thoroughly going through every single page on the current site and mapping out all the content fields you'll need before beginning the setup. That way you'll know what you can turn into components to speed up development time. And you're also not surprised by a page that throws off your development workflow due to uniquely structured content. And lastly, just keep in mind the added costs for external hosting and maintenance. I also just wanna make the point that you can't use just any Shopify developer if you're going headless. Ideally, you'll wanna find an agency partner or an in-house developer who has experience building for e-commerce with a modernized tech stack. It's really crucial to find somebody who has that e-commerce experience because there's a really big difference between building a brochure website or an informational site versus building an e-commerce site. The user experience is vastly different. So how to get started? Shopify has two APIs you're going to need to keep in mind. The first one is the storefront API. The storefront API get, grabs all the information from the Shopify store to allow you to display it on the storefront. Very accurately named. Uh, the second one is the GraphQL admin API. And this is where you're going to be uh, using this to create products, create collections, uh, create orders, pull in anything with webhooks. You're going to use it for creating meta fields, exposing meta fields to the storefront. This is where a lot of the action comes in from the back end. So you're going to want to really spend some time to learn how these APIs work and how they differ as well. Shopify has really detailed documentation on this. You can find this at shopify.dev. And I also included two links in this, uh, this presentation here uh, directly to the API reference documentation for both of these APIs. And that's everything. Shopify is a really solid complement to building a headless storefront. And I highly recommend taking a deeper look into going headless on Shopify to see if it's right for your business. Thank you.